Perry, distilled reverse osmosis or high altitude, high altitude, glacial water. That's the one I'd choose because it's lowering deuterium. Reverse osmosis is just basically getting rid of particulates or whatever. And distilled, similar sort of concept. So really, what is the elevation of that? That will give you the fractionation of the deuterium content of that water. So the higher, the lower the deuterium due to, due to UV, the lower. And also the same thing with rainwater. Rainwater is very low. It's actually lower than alpine water. So if you've got the ability to capture rainwater um, in a tank, that would be the lowest deuterium water you could actually get from nature because it's coming it's coming from higher elevation, especially if it's coming from cloud cover, which is much higher, as a, which is higher than, you know, we're talking about glacial water. And so that will be the absolute best. But uh, you, you, it, you know, when it comes to rainwater, it's very hard. I, I have, I've, I think I've seen in my life one product, rainwater product. Um, and I, when I did a bit of research, I wasn't even sure whether it's actually, um, you know, diluted or real rainwater or stuff. You know, yeah, hard to know with those sort of things. But I would say, you know, your best, your, your best is rainwater. If you can capture it, if you've got the capacity, that means you're set up you're in a rural area and you've set up your, to be able to capture rainwater. Um, if you can't, that the next best thing is the higher the elevation. That's why the like the water coming from the alpine regions of Italy, which are slightly lower, is 149 parts per million. And the stuff coming from the higher elevations, which is in the um, French Alps, um, is about 146 so three parts per million less so you know obviously you know when you look at the himalayas where the tibet you know tibetan people are which is even higher the water there the glacial water there is even lower it's down into the to the 140 type the low 140s or and it, and in some areas even 138 which is getting very close to that of fat so you can understand now these people are using that water for their plants and for their animals and they're actually lowering the deuterium threshold it's not surprising that there are so many centenarians amongst themselves because they're on low deuterium um, sources of water both from animal fat and from direct water so it makes a big difference it's something that all these so-called blue zone sort of aficionados have no freaking idea about so yeah, they make a whole lot of assumptions about a whole lot of things because they can't laterally think. So, you know, it's, for them, it's sort of all this reductionist thinking, this sort of narrow band thinking, as I call it. Yes, it's usually low IQ people that they want to act smart to other people. Anyway, does rainwater contain other chemical pollutions because of... Look... <laughs> If you're in an area which is highly polluted, yes. You know, you know, rainwater could contain contaminants. So, yeah. I'm just using that as an example of the deuterium level. I'm not talking about contaminants, you know. Obviously, if you live in an area where you're going to basically have a, potentially a lot of contamination, heavy metal contamination, all sorts of things. Now, you could probably filter that rainwater, but then, you, you know, there's that it's an additional expense is it worth it i'll leave that up to people i'm not going to decide people's lives you have to work out i'm just telling you giving you the information how you act on it is your business and what you can afford you know so basically <laughs>